Hello, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us for this Illuminate Hackathon workshop. Um, today, we're very lucky to be joined by Isaac Zhang, who's a principal engineer at Layer Zero Labs. Um, Layer Zero Labs, uh, we're thrilled to have as a sponsor of the uh, Illuminate Hackathon. And uh, Layer Zero Labs uh, is an incredible, uh, incredible protocol. Uh, they've been uh, innovating quite a lot in the general message passing space, uh, and we can't wait to hear um, all of that today. So today, Isaac is going to talk to you about uh, building a cross-chain dApp. Um, and uh, if you have any questions at all, uh, there is a, a message uh, section. So please ask uh, any questions uh, that you have. And uh, thank you so much for joining us, Isaac. Yeah, uh, thank you for the invitation, Kevin. <clears throat> it's it's great to talk to you, uh, talk about Azure with everyone. So uh, if you don't mind, I will just go straight into the screen sharing section. Amazing. All right, good. OK. Yeah, uh, I can see. Looks great. OK, okay yeah. So uh, <clears throat> so today, we just focus on talking about how to build on layer zero. We will give a brief introduction of the overall architecture and uh, talk about where, where, where we are right now in terms of like adoption and uh, uses and contracts and things. And then we go straight into the code and to talk about how to build on this. Cool. So uh, the protocol, the protocol, like uh, we proud ourselves for having uh, two very important tenants, first principles. The first will be the decentralized mes messaging. Sorry. Which like uh, you can imagine uh, messages, like you're talking to your friend on Telegram, right? You have a ch channel. And that channel is totally user owned and risk silo. But then, like, I mean, only the configuration, any party that you configure to interact with the channel can push message into the chain channel. And whatever happened in one channel won't affect the other chain channel. That's what I mean by user owned chain, chain channel. And the second part is future proof. Uh, because if you look at the right side of the slide, <clears throat> The overall architecture is like a, it's like the internet stack. So you first send a message, you go down the stack and then go up the stack again <clears throat> on the other side. At the source, you send a thing through the endpoint. The endpoint is immutable, the point of contact for the app to send and receive a message. And then you go into a message loop where the message loop is just is a registry and increasing append only array of messaging libraries doing the re responsible for sending and receiving the messages, right? So what I mean by future proof is that like uh, we can only append messages into the registry and all the existing me me message lib is not upgradable and one-time configuration. So that if there is a pathway, a message channel that works, it would work forever. And we, we talk about like a, it's a there's no way for any team, including Lay Zero, to rock our u, u, u users. That's what we mean by the future proof. And then another another side of the future proofs that you because we can upgrade, we can add new messaging libraries with uh, bug fix and uh, improvements, optimizations, or new messaging behaviors. So subscribing to Lay Zero, you also subscribe to an ongoing improvement of the future. We uh, will keep bringing the best research into production for our users. And the third is, is censorship resistant by ordered validation. So in the protocol, we enforce every single message has to arrive in order as the way you send them. Just imagine you're talking to your friends on Telegram, right? We guarantee the message to be delivered in order and like a full in, in full. So that's a three part. So lazy will only move the bytes, the message you, you send from one side to the other side. And we won't add any contest, such as like a chain, where the chains from, or uh, where it is going to, into the payload. We're just moving bytes. And the user, the users can flexibly define how they want to move the information using these bytes. If you encode the DeFi, the token, transfer run and bin into the bytes, then it will be a token app, right? 
So that that's how it, how 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 it works. And the second tenant is end-to-end -end execution. So uh, on the web too, maybe sending messages like a send a message, the other guy will receive it. But then because on web three, after the message arrived, like being validated, you also need to execute it on the other side. Someone has to pay for the gas to provide the execution context for the execution. So that part is like already in the protocol too. We call it end-to-end -end execution. So when you send a message on the right, you would attach, uh, you, you, you can attach something we call the adapter param parameters, which will be forward to the executor. And executor would just execute accordingly at the remote, at the destination. And we talk about how how powerful you can um, configure the adapter parameters to, to, to be on the Git book later on. So that will be the overall architect architecture. Going down the stack, going up the stack, and you can have the benefit of ongoing list of messaging libraries without being without the possibilities of being rugged. Cool. And then uh, the ultra line node. Ultra line node is the first version of the messaging libraries. So it has three very important properties. One is the open participation. So in the ultra line node, we have two major roles. One is the oracle. The other one is the relay, right? The oracle is just, just like a light node. The oracle relay the block headers and the relay provides some sort of proof for the inclusion of the transition in the block head header to the other side. So the, uh, but then it's like a totally user owned. That's our principle. But that, I mean, the app, the user application can choose anyone to be your Oracle and your relay and the implementation can be arbitrary. So let's say if you choose Chinglink as your or or Oracle and um, Sushi as your relay, then as long as they don't co collude, your message will be correct. And if you don't trust any of them, you can run your own relay, which is like, um, we're about to open source our own relay implementation. And then as long as you don't collude with Chinglink, there is no way for them to fake a message. And uh, it's just a simple tweak, but the, imp imp the implication can be huge. <clears throat> so the app, your, like let's say the app, the app does not have to trust Chainlink. You can trust your own relay. And then the app's user, they don't have to trust the app. You can trust Chainlink, which is the underlying of many DeFi protocols on the, on, 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 uh, in crypto, right? So it's like an open participate pay patient and user owned. And uh, running your own relay or Oracle would be what we call the trust back backstop. You can backstop anything bad from ha happening that yourself cannot like individually fake any messages to the app. This is the high level properties of the ultra line node, which is the first version of the messaging library. And uh, we, we, we are, we are re re researching many new variants of ultra line node, including some uh, new messaging verification me mechanisms based on zero knowledge proof. And uh, <clears throat> and after that is done, like, we just keep adding that to the end endpoint so that uh, our users would can passively subscribe to all these improvements behind the scene. Uh, I, want, I want to spend a few minutes to talk about the program too. The pre-crime. Um, pre-crime is the name from, uh, from the movie. Minority report, right? So you get, you know, so it's like a, to, how can you know a crime before? How, how can you like a, stop a crime from happening if uh, if you can have the perfect knowledge of the future? So that's what we do before our relay relays every single packet. We will check the global invariants. The first point is that app can define the global invariants. For example, in the Stargate, which is checked the global solvency of all the register tokens on all the pathways of all the swap. So uh, we, we will assume if a hack or an exploit happens, someone will, getting, will, will be getting more money than they're supposed to, supposed to get, which means that it will break the solvency. Every single pack packet, we check the, all the global pools, seven chains, maybe over 100 pools, uh, 100 path. And if all the number checks out, then we will relay the packet. That's why it is like a so far bulletproof. And after billions and billions of transactions, the book accounting is perfect. 
there's not one way of like a WWEI way. And uh, what happened beh behind that was just like a fork all the associated chains and simulated transitions, given the packet time and assert the global invariant variant. And all these benefits can happen behind the scene without the user knowing, like uh, having to do anything extra, but to just de define some like uh, invariant functions for us to call. And uh, we will revert the message and terminate the relaying if an exploit is detected. Yeah, and uh, the pre-crime has been live on mainnet since March, the first day we launched Stargate. And uh, it has been protected. Uh, it has protected us from many, many attempts of attack from uh, all, from different attack services. <clears throat> yeah, that'll be it. And then now we have deployed on 23 EVM chains and one non EVM chain, which is Aptos. Aptos. And uh, we also launched an app called uh, the aptosbridge.com. Uh, I will talk about the statistics lay later on. And uh, we have achieved the organic growth from March, the day we launched the mainnet. All the way is almost like, um, I mean, it's it's really surprising to see such growth in the bear mar market against the, the trend, right? And we have just hit the 1 million checkpoint, the milestone in a few a few days ago. And on the mainnet, we have over 1,000, uh, 1,700 contracts deployed 8,000 on the test testnet and secure over 4, 4 billion TVL. <clears throat> and the spectrum of the app include DeFi, NFT, and uh, NFT infrastructures, gaming, all sorts of like uh, apps that you can imagine you can find on a single chain. <clears throat> uh, I want to talk, uh, spend a bit more time talking about the use, use cases. Stargate, over 4 billion TVL in three weeks, I think, which is pretty like a record. Like a, <clears throat> we managed to do that in three weeks after launch, which is like a, a record in uh, D DeFi, I believe. And uh, we have served over 500,000 transfers with over 162,000 unique wallets, which you can imagine will be likely the unique user accounts. Hashflow is the first cross-chain native swap. Like uh, you can swap from any native token from one chain to the other chain. Uh, actually, Hashflow is one of the earliest app that have launched on us without talking to us. They just go to see our keybook and they build everything themselves. Very, very simple. Sushi swap. Uh, it's the first cross-chain token swap. Building on Stargate, using the Stargate as the the underlying liquidity transfer lay layer. The Aptos bridge will be the number one bridge by user counts on the Aptos today. And the uh, Omnichain token, uh, what we call the OFT, the Omnichain fun Fungible token, including the Stargate, the BTCP, and many, and many sort of game tokens. BTCP is the BTC on uh, Avalanche bridge from the, from the BTC network. And O and O N F T ghostly ghost time these kind of names maybe some some are uh, known to people, I and I think ghostly ghost was the first O N F T and in the first first three days it hit the number one transaction volumes on the Open C. That would be uh, a, some selected use cases from one thousand seventy hundred con contracts we have on a magnet, and a quote. Like uh, we proud ourselves like ease of implementation. This is like a, a direct quote, quote from uh, core sushi developers. We do spend a lot of time to focus on uh, giving devs everything they need to build exceptional crushing apps. And let's just jump right into the code. <clears throat> All right, so like uh, building on layer zero is just very is as simple as setting like uh, building three interfaces first to send a message uh ba ba basically the interface is just like that like uh, you tell me where which chain are you going to send to and which address on the remote chain and what is the payload the bytes pay payload 
and these are like uh, the, some EVM stuff, stuff to to because like uh, when you send a message on the chain, you pay on on the chain, so pay native token on the chain, so you have some refund addresses to 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 receive the excessive total tokens, and the adaptive program would be to 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 indicate what sort of off chain behaviors for execution at the remote, and then at the and the and then you <clears throat> you just need to implement another function called the receive message. Which is the function called LZ receive. You need to implement this interface at the remote, and then when the message arrives, it will give you the context, including like where it is from, the source chain, and which source contract sends the message. What is the like the nonce of the message and the payload? Simple as that. Very intuitive, and uh, this will be an example. Fun. An example app how to build on layer zero is a counter. You, like uh, you send a message from the source and then you inc increment the counter at the destination, right? First, you need to check the message sender to be someone you, uh, uh, so you need to check the so message, message dot sender is the endpoint, the layer zero endpoint, and it's immutable. And then you check the remote address, the source address is someone you can trust. That's it. And then you increment the counter. Increment account counter. So sim simply send and receive, and everything just happen. So I've talked to many of our developers. They say, "Oh, it's, it is a ma magical experience. The first time you build on layer zero, just implement a function, deploy and send, and then you receive. Like a simple, simple as that. You can have the same experience on Aptos too. So it's the same. It's basically the same thing. But uh, another part is you need to reg register your app." And then send a message. The interface is similar, and then receive a message. LZ receive. That's it. And uh, if you want to have like a more fan fancy behaviors, of us, you can have some. We call the adaptive params, right? We have now we have two types of adaptive params. The first type is to say how many gas you want to execute your con your your transactions at the re remote. And then the second time you can. You can specify some air, air drop at the, at, the, at the source because, like a lot of time, you when you bridge something from one chain to the other other chain, you don't have the native token on the other chain and the remote chain, right? So uh, we we give this function for the apps to to specify how much they want, so that they can have some base native gas to execute. Maybe do a swap on the DeFi on on the Dex to have more to swap for more native token to do things. Is that like a, so that they don't need to go through the, all the centralized exchange to to put money in and put money out? <clears throat> that would be like a, uh, the two types of adaptive program, and uh, we are we are we and this is also an ongoing like a, a ever expanding list. So it's, it's it will be the same interface as like a, just a bytes, and then you can specify the type that you want, the parameter that you want, and then we will just everything just happen magically behind the scene. Yeah, and uh, let me let's look at like more codes in action. If you look go into our uh, GitHub, you can find a lot of links into our uh, solid solidity examples. It's a public repo just called solidity examples. You can find a lot of contrast templates and the mock, the mock including the endpoint mock and things. So then you can develop like a, a EVM crushing crushing apps using our mock. As if you are writing local functions, and that's how we use to develop all the apps. And you can find a lot of tokens, OFT, OFT standards, different versions, right? And re recently, I believe, like, uh, and uh, BTCB recently just launched an app. Uh, let me look at the tweet for you guys. Mm, what is it? So, actually, so this is how BDCB, the BDC, BDC tokens on Avalanche launched their token, like as a crossing token, native token, very simple. So on the source chain, where where the token already exists. 
they just need to implement something called a pro proxy. Just a few few lines of code, uh, just like uh, how you launch an ERC20 token. And then on the ch other EVM chain that you need to, um, th that you don't already have the BTCB, just launch something called a BTCB OFT, import the library, just like that, just, just like a ERC20 token. And then on the Aptos, to my knowledge, they are the first wrap BTC on uh, Aptos. Just, just just that. The syntax will be, I mean, the the, the you, you need to write more codes, but it's, that's because of the move. But then the basic behavior is the same. Implement the LZ receive, and then implement some like a, in, like import some base contracts as a template. That will be it. And then that is the full scope of uh, how to build on layer, layer zero. And I want to spend some, like uh, to some, spend some time to answer some questions you guys may have. Thank, thank you. Hello. Thank you so much, Isaac. Yeah. Yeah. So if anybody has any uh, questions, feel free to drop them in the chat. And uh, in the meantime. Uh, Isaac, if you don't mind, I was just going to discuss some of the bounties. Yeah, cool, go ahead. Cool, cool. Um, so Layer Zero has $20,000 uh, worth of bounties. Um, so a huge opportunity to earn lots of prizes here. Um, just to, to break them down, you can find uh, all of them listed here uh, on Gitcoin. So I'll just po post the link here. Uh, but the exact bounties are, um, the first one is the implementation of the OFT standard on a live token. Um, a live token that has uh, at least $250,000 of market cap. That's a $4,000 prize. Um, there's a $3,000 prize for integration of the ONFT standard um, in a protocol or a collection. Um, then uh, there's a governance focused one, which is a $4,000 prize uh, if you enable new on-chain governance capabilities uh, with layer zero. Um, there's also a, uh, a DeFi specific bounty uh, for $4,000, um, so enabling omni-chain capabilities um, to your protocol. And uh, uh, there's one or two more. And um, there is a, uh, you know, like a, a beginner easy one, which is uh, if you have an idea pitch that you'd like to see. Um, so that's for a smaller dollar amount. It's for $500. Uh, but you can still get involved and uh, create something that's that's really, really cool. Um so we're, we're thrilled to see all that. And, uh, you know, we can't thank you enough, uh, Isaac and Layer Zero and Irene, uh, Xerox Maki and everybody for, for their support here. Cool. Yeah, I'm, I'm checking the questions in the channel. Oh, just one question. Cool. So, um, is that all? I think in terms of questions, yeah. Um, IW has the has yeah, the question uh, there. Just, um, I think like um, the interested audience can just go dig around the open source code base. There are plenty of things like examples and things. Totally. Yeah. Um, and I think you put a link to the GitHub there. Um, Yes, like I chat. just send it to the ch channel, yeah. Cool. And uh, we have also, I will send a GitHub link too. So like uh, many, many applications. I think we have only talked to a handful, maybe tens of applications. Most of them, they develop without talking to us. Just go through the GitHub and it's done. And, uh, uh, and uh, we, we don't have like a lot of apps that give us a lot of traffic. We don't know any of them. They just, they just work. It just work. It's amazing. Dang, that's awesome. Uh, so I think we have like our Discord channel. Many, many, people, uh, many people ask uh, great technical questions. And uh, later on, we will merge them into our GitHub book too. And you can find the support on this, this Discord channel.
Cool, cool. Um, cool. Well, if there's uh, if there's no more questions, I think we're we're good to wrap up. And uh, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Or uh, um, uh, it may be, I'm not sure exactly which time zone you're in, but uh, uh-huh. thank you for joining us. <laughs> yeah, it's all good. Like, uh, thank you for the invitation. It's always always good to talk to potential developers. Cool. Thank you. Cool. So uh, in terms of other stuff going on this week, uh, Jeremy and I have office hours uh, tomorrow. Uh, that will be uh, 1 p.m. EST, and uh, that'll be in the Moonbeam Discord. So that's discord.gg slash moonbeam. And then uh, next week, we're we're scheduling uh, office hours with, with uh, each of the protocol teams. So uh, there'll probably be a, a layer zero office hours uh, next week, um, if not uh, as well the, the week after. Um, so yeah, that's uh, that's all I have. Um, thank you so much for for joining us. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye.